We might take one more. I think I call Dr. Duncan Webb. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for a moment there, I thought I was invisible, but I'm very thank you for seeing me there. I have a, I have a question. Um, uh, I have a question uh, for the member in respect of clause six, and uh, my, my, my colleagues here have been um, entertaining us uh, or enlightening us with some uh, questions about food. But mine's much more technical. It's around the repeal of the act because it's quite unusual. It's quite unusual clause, uh, member. Hughes, that uh, you've got there, um, that the Act is repealed after 18 months after its commencement. Um, and I wonder if advice was taken on this, because uh, the effect of repeal on delegated legislation is something that we need to think very carefully about. That's fair enough. Um, and it doesn't ex actually provide in this bill that any delegated legislation made in pursuant, pursuance of it uh, remains in effect. Uh, notwithstanding the repeal of what appears to be empowering legislation. So that's, that's my first point, and I do have a related point, because the, the options are either it remains in place, but traditionally when the empowering legislation disappears, that's the foundation upon which the uh, delegated legislation is built, and the rest of it all crumbles away. Now, I am aware that this is it's, it's a slightly unusual piece of legislation because, in a sense, it's saying here's the um, obligation to make this delegated legislation, but it's to be made under section 27 of the Fair Trading Act, and that's clause 5.1. So you've got this unusual situation where you've got uh, section 6 repealing the Act, um, but it may or may not be called empowering legislation. Um, and, and in that sense, in saying <coughs> section 5.1, um, my concern is that whilst it directs the minister to make a recommendation, um, there's a danger in there, isn't there, member, that, um, that the, the minister may change his mind, um, that the recommendation, or her, or her at the current time, I think it's uh, Mr Fafoy, uh, Minister Fafoy, um, but the minister may make that recommendation, <coughs> then, may, then may either change that recommendation, revoke that recommendation, or even once the regulations are in place, could simply say, uh, and I'm sure the current minister wouldn't do this, but a future one might, oh, that was a bad idea. Um, I've decided that uh, for whatever reason, such and such goods which we've got in this bill, you know, dried fruit, cured pork, is going to be excluded from it. And it seems to be absolutely no fetter on the minister having a change of heart in that regard. So I'm, I'm wondering, member, if, there, if any um, thought was given to that, because whilst it's a good direction to the minister to make that recommendation, uh, it seems to be somewhat uh, weak in its future enforcement of it. So, so really my questions are about the way this works, both in terms of the regulations themselves, which are of course regulations which, as the, uh, Member Brownlee will know, will go before the Regulations Review Committee and may be disallowed for whatever reason, um, but also we, um, what happens on repeal and what will be the case if the Minister changes his mind. Clearly it would be a real concern, but it strikes me that there's no ability for this House to um, use any powers under this piece of legislation to revisit it. <coughs> so the member might want to either uh, a think about amending Clause 6 to make it clear that the regulations survive any repeal, and secondly, give this House some power to take essentially an enforcement <coughs> action against a minister who doesn't make the recommendation or who uh, changes the mind on the recommendation or who, in fact, um, having made a recommendation and the regulations having been passed, then uh, changes the regulations in a way that would have been inconsistent with this legislation. Of course, the legislation may then have been repealed, which leads us into another conundrum. Um, having said that, uh, Mr Hughes, I do absolutely congratulate you on this piece of legislation. It's a huge leap forward, much needed, uh, a piece of legislation that we've all been waiting for, yep. um, and you've yep. shown the patience um, of a saint 
in um, working through it, seeing the massive changes and negotiating your way through a very difficult piece of legislation. So I congratulate you on that. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thank you to the members for their